everybody, in this video we are going to download and install VirtualBox and this will let us run a virtual machine on our Windows computer. On the website you should be able to click the Windows host download and download and install it that way. However, when I made this video their website was having some issues so I actually had to download it off of techspot.com and if you go here you can just select the Windows download option and get it that way. After you get VirtualBox, you'll want to go ahead and download a Linux operating system to use for this. I'm going to be using Ubuntu, just because it's the only one I have messed around with. I don't really have that much Linux experience. And I just chose whatever the first one I saw when I went to download a desktop OS for Ubuntu. Once you have both those downloaded, you want to go ahead and run the VirtualBox installation exe. Once you finish the installation, you should get prompted with this. You can hit finish and then VirtualBox will open. Now we need to create a new entry for our Ubuntu OS. So we'll click new. I'll call this Ubuntu, but you can name it anything. And I'll click on next. Here you will choose the amount of RAM you want to dedicate when you are using the virtual machine. And I'm just going to do, let's say eight gigabytes is a ton of RAM. I should never need anything close to that. Now we need to create our virtual hard disk. And we're just going to click next through this. We can choose either dynamically allocated for the disk space or fixed size. And if you do dynamically allocated, it'll just use up more or less space depending on when you need it. But fixed size is faster. So I'm just going to use fixed size. And the amount of space I'm going to dedicate is, uh, let's say, around 30 gigabytes which should be more than enough, and we'll hit create. All right, now we have our new entry set up for Ubuntu. So what we will do is we'll go ahead and start this. And it asks us to select a startup disk. So here's where we will select that Ubuntu ISO that we had downloaded. And now we can hit start. All right, here we will select install Ubuntu. And on here, when we select Erase Disk and Install Ubuntu, it's not going to affect anything on your real uh, hard drive that you're using. It's going to erase the disk space that this virtual machine is using, where we had allocated the 30 gigabytes. So I'm just going to check that and hit Install now. Once that's done installing, you should get prompted to restart. So you just hit restart and then the virtual machine will restart. Then you'll just press enter. All right, it takes a little while, but then you should be greeted with something like this. I'm just going to hit next through these prompts and done, close out of that. The first thing we're going to do is go up to devices, click on insert guest edition CD image, and then click on run. You also type in the password that you'd set up for this user and then press authenticate. What this will let us do is use different resolutions than 800 by 600 so we can go full screen. And I believe it has some other nice features, but I don't recall off the top of my head what they are. So once that's done, you can just press return. And now if we go into full screen, the screen should adjust and you know we can actually have a full screen window. And then you might get prompted with a software update. So let's just go ahead and do this. We can open up the software updater and just see the progress there. Once that update's finished, we'll go ahead and restart. We can restart by just going up to the power icon, hitting that, and hitting restart. All right, now we are back at our desktop. We want to open up the terminal, so we can do that by holding Control and Alt and pressing T. That will pull up our terminal where we can issue commands. The first command we're going to issue is to try to get updates. Next we are going to install Clang, which I think we're using for debugging. And we'll hit yes. Next we are going to install CMake. And we'll hit yes. Now that that is done, let's go ahead and install Visual Studio Code. And that's what we're going to be using for writing our code on this operating system. 
So what we can do is we can click this uh, little app icon, the Ubuntu software application, and we can go to search at the top right. We'll type in Visual Studio. In the first option should be Visual Studio Code. So with that blue icon, we'll click on that and we will click install. Now you'll type in your password and press authenticate. All right, so once that is installed, um, we're going to go ahead and launch this. And you should get some pop-up for the documentation, but we don't care about that right now. So we'll just exit out of this. So the first thing we need to do with Visual Studio Code is set up our extensions. So you'll see this icon right here. This is the extensions. We'll click on this. And there's a few that we'll need. If you just type in C++, you should see the C slash C++ extension. We'll get that. We'll hit install. Uh, we want the IntelliSense extension. And we want the Clang Command Adapter extension, or C and C++. Next, we are also just going to get something called Code Runner, just so we can run an individual CPP file if we want. And then we are also going to get the CMake and CMake Tools extensions right here. Okay, great. So what we want to do is we want to uh, create a folder where we are going to put all of the code. We'll just create a new folder. We'll just call this uh, CPP, I guess. And we'll create a folder in here called SRC for source. Now, if we go into our Visual Studio code and we click on the top to open up our file explorer, what we can do is we can go to File, Open Folder, and we can go to our desktop, find our CPP folder, and open up the, click on the source file and press OK. And here we can add a source file just for our test. We'll call this uh, source.cpp. And we're just going to do a simple printout. Oh, it looks like I forgot to install G++, which is what we'll be using to compile. You can install that with this command. So we'll press enter, put in our password, hit yes, press enter. And once that is done, we can close out of that terminal. And what we can actually do is we can click this um, play symbol up here to run the code. And you'll see down in the terminal, we will get hello world. So now let's say that we want to try debugging. So I've set an integer called value to five. What we'll do is we will click on this icon to go to the debug section. And we need to add a configuration here. So we'll hit add configuration and I'll select GDB and I'll just use the default configuration. So here, for example, um, enter program name, uh, it says, for example, a dot out. We're just going to put in, uh, we'll just call this source. And then what we can do is we can go back to our uh, Explorer view, and we can open up a terminal. And I was, we could do the Control-Alt-T and open up this terminal out here, or we could, um, you know, open up a terminal in VS Code. Now we want to compile this source.cpp in a way that we can debug it. So we will move to the directory where the file is, which in our example is just in this CPP folder inside of a source folder. And you see if we do ls, we have the source.cpp file. So we're just going to compile this with uh, G++. So we'll use G++ minus G for the deep, for, so that we can debug it. The file that we are compiling is source.cpp. And we want to name this as source. So we'll press enter. And you'll see now we have this actual binary file here to run. So when we go back to the debugger, let's go back here. So we have our breakpoint right when we do this C out. We'll go to the debugger and we will hit start debugging. And it says launch program source does not exist. So let's see, let's open up our, oh, okay. For the program I put source, but I really should have had a workspace folder slash source. So now let's give this another test. We'll go back to the debug, hit the button to debug, 
and it's going, and there we go. We hit our breakpoint, and we see value is 5. And then here we could continue, or, you know, we have our step into, step out, step over, etc. I'm just going to hit continue, and then, you know, we see our hello world. In the next video, we are going to download the GitHub repo and set up our CMake file to be able to build our project in the Linux environment.